Today is Tuesday, September 20th. This is Lecture 7 for Research Tools. The trackpad, that's my problem. Uh, yeah, that'll definitely do it. So make sure when you're logging into IRC today to use it through Firefox inside of the virtual machine rather than Firefox from the Windows side so that you're just inside of the virtual machine. You have to install Chatzilla again inside of that Firefox. By the end of the semester, you'll be so used to installing Chatzilla that uh, you'll do it in your sleep, probably. Yep. So it's failing on you. Oh, you're on, are you on the guest wireless or the yes. CCOM wireless? The guest wireless won't let you through. That's why you definitely need to use the command line IRSSI client. Too many networks and firewalls yeah, and... That's probably the best, otherwise you're going to have to possibly reset up for another computer. And What's going on here? Erroneous nickname. So you need to change the name to be something other than research tools. At the bottom left you have this research tools tab. Yeah. Click there and change your name to be your name. So there's already uh, probably a research tools logged in from one of you guys, so you all need to make sure that you have the right name. So did you log into, log into Chatzilla inside of the virtual machine? Oh. <laughs> Should I? Yes. Excellent. Everybody, when you if you get the erroneous name, it means that Chatzilla has using the default name. If you look at the bottom left corner of your screen, it says research tools with a little arrow pointing down. Click that button, select change name, and type in your username. So if you SSH to research tools and you run IRSSI, mm -hmm. you can use that. The one warning is instead of attach up there on the screen, yep. uh, you'll do connect. connect. It, for some reason it has a slightly different command syntax than Chadzilla, oh, okay. which is frustrating. And it's not a very pretty client. So did you open Firefox? Yep. And did you go up to tools? Since there's no Chadzilla in there, you'll need to go to add-ons. And then there's a search window that's very hard to see that's right there. Click Chatzilla in there, it's all one word. You can hit enter or search. You can click the top one. If you speak Spanish, French, or Polish, you can pick that language, but click install to the right of it. And then once it's installed, you'll have to, it'll ask you to restart your restart and then the tool will be available. First time right here where I change the name. You'll change the name at that. I think I haven't, I haven't attached anything yet. So click down, okay. change name, go ahead and change your name. Okay. So you did a search, and then after you add the uh, tool, don't forget to restart Firefox or the add-on won't be available yet. I'm very happy about the content of the lecture today, too. Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad you like the lecture. It should be fun. Uh, it's not UNH, it's .NH. New Hampshire, eight years ago, pick that. If you were, you have to have this browser open to stay in um, Chatzilla once you have it open. Uh, you can try it. Give it a go. There you go. There's your answer. <laughs> it's it's a virtual machine, so usually try it. If it blows up, you can always reboot the virtual machine and start over. There you go. Now you can join the UNH Resource Tools channel. The annoying client. Oh. I just use free IRC chat. Now, wait, are you... In the web browser? So you most likely, are you on the inside network then? No. You're on guest? Yeah. So then if you're probably, do you see the, the user list? So I can see you. Yeah, that I put myself in the outside one so that oh, I was going to okay. check before class starts. But so you... if I'm connecting, you're saying internal? Yeah, so there, you will not be able through a web interface to be able to get to that if you're on the guest network. You have to SSH to research tools, run the... What you can do for right now from the guest network is you can SSH over to yeah. research tools, run IRSSI, and it's going to be a horrible text-based client, and it's very confusing. Yeah. Have you ever used this, though? Um, there's some really awesome, there's a whole bunch of really awesome web ones. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. Like Freenode has one built in and a bunch of cool ones. So it's in an internal server in a protected domain. So you're, so what were you so saying? So open, open up a new terminal, yeah. SSH to research tools, and then run IRSSI on research tools. You're basically going into the inner protected domain. Any chats that happen there don't end up going out to the world in any way. Do you have this on the, um, your class notes? From one of the classes, yes. Instead of attach, you do connect. Oh, and this is the free node one, so that's the old one. 
And now you can do, now you're not attaching to Freenode, you're attaching to what's up on the whiteboard up there? Researchtools.ccom.nh. Now you're connecting okay. up. So now go ahead and type in the second command, the join command. So go ahead and do the UNH Research Tools join. So change nickname, so type in your name. It's the. It gets very confused when there's lots of people who all try to be who called Research Tools. Um, now do the. So you clicked it, type OK. Quit Chatzilla and start over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quit Chatzilla. <laughs> now start it up again. Change your name. Click OK. Now do the attach. They just don't work, yeah. It wants letters. But uh, I can use uh, any nickname, new nickname. Uh, yes, but you need to use your username, otherwise I won't know it's you. You misspelled the join, so there's you missed in your command. You need to rerun the join command that's up on the whiteboard. See how it says slash join space pound UNH research tools? Yeah. You missed the UNH. We're going to go ahead and get started here. If you all go to the website for the class, I just pasted that into the IRC. If you go into there, I've now posted the lecture notes for lecture seven today. And I've been getting the audio up there. If you want to re-listen to the lecture, hit pause, whatnot, replay it until you get it. There's MP3s, M4A is for Mac users, AUG typically for Linux users. There's a question. Are you streaming now? We are and not streaming are live. live. I go through and I tend to remove about a half an hour from each class of, like as I go through each person, yeah. you'll, you would hear me say the same thing to a couple different people with minor variations and I delete a lot of that. Go ahead and open up that Emacs and org mode file. At the end of class, you're going to start working on the homework that will be due at the end of Thursday. And that will be in Emacs org mode. So you'll be actually typing stuff into org mode and then submitting the homework that way. It's due at 5 p.m. so that if you need to talk to me before or after class on Thursday, that I'll be around and I can give you some help if you get stuck. So we'll jump in today's class. A couple of these items that are on here come directly from questions from you all. So questions are great. And we're going to go take a look at the Ubuntu man page section. If you scroll down just a little ways. Oftentimes, if you've got multiple computers, and especially if you're in this classroom working when there's no one else here, there's no reason you can't log into two computers and have one showing documentation and the other one being your work. Small screens can be kind of frustrating sometimes. So one way that you could use that multiple screens, those man pages we've been looking at are available online. And if you click on uh, the manpages.ubuntu.com, this has got all of the man pages for Ubuntu. So even if they're not installed in the machine and you haven't installed a particular package yet, they should be here. We're using the version of Ubuntu named 11.04. It's also called Natty, so you'll see N-A-T-T-Y. They go through the alphabet, and they're, they were up to N on this one. The next one starts with an O. And there's a search form. Search form is hiding over to the right here, if you've got a narrow screen <laughs> like me. And in the search form, we can type whatever we feel like for man pages. I'm going to pick one at random, min max. This is a command you'll be using in the homework. Now, there's a version of min max in each of these. So if we click on the one for Natty 11.04, MinMax 1, here it tells you all the man page information for that particular command. One very weird thing is if you look at the GMT version, for some reason they've gone back a whole bunch of versions. So if we go, you can either go forward in time or back in time. If we go to the 10.10 one and look at the same man page, you'll see that there's a newer version of GMT. So I think they had a, a minor quirk in their packaging. So if the man page is somehow weird or really old in the page you're looking at, you can jump and look at the different versions of Ubuntu and see what the man page looks like. So like 11.10 will be coming out next month. And so here's the min max man page for the upcoming release. And you can read through all the options. So that way you can have it up on another screen if you're working in here or if you happen to be somewhere in a lab, say with two monitors. It's nice to be able to have that up on a separate computer if you need, need to be reading about things. So I wanted to show you another resource that's called Safari Books Online. 
There is a ton of material here at UNH. Our library is hit or miss on having material. It's missing a lot of stuff that we would like to have for research, but it does have some really great resources. And one of them, if you're doing stuff related to Linux and computers, is called Safari Books Online. And books can get very expensive very fast. If they're between $20 and $60 a typical computer book, that's going to add up very fast. While you're here, you have access to computer books through the service called Safari Books Online. And when you leave, if you're not at a place that has Safari Books and you still think you need access to them, you can get a personal account, but it's a lot cheaper than buying tons of books. And this way you get to see lots of them. So if we take a quick look, if you haven't used the UNH library before, you have to access it through Blackboard. So I'm going to open this link in a new window. You go to Blackboard, click Login. I'm going to use my weird UNH login. So now I'm logged into Blackboard. Very exciting. I'm sure you've all done this for your class registration. And there's a library tab here. It's the second one. Click on Library. And then there's Connect to Databases. This is a very twisted long path to get to it. Over on the right in Databases, there's S through T. And luckily, the top one is Safari Books Online. So if you're looking for material on any sort of software, look here first. It won't have things necessarily like if you want a book on Keras or ArcGIS or Flatter Mouse, there probably won't be anything in here. But if you want a book on Python or say you're using Microsoft Excel and having trouble figuring something out, there's all kinds of technical books in here on programming and using software. There's lots of categories, or you can just search. For example, today we're using Emacs, so you can type Emacs into that search engine up here. Okay, so you type Emacs in the search window, click Search. You'll now see a few books on Emacs come up. The frustrating thing about the library is they just say, here's our databases. Have fun. Which ones are relevant to us isn't obvious. So I'm going to try and point out a few as we go through the semester. And you can search for books here. And you can start reading the book right online. There's a very big drawback to Safari. You can't necessarily get a PDF of the book and go take a look at it at sea. So you have to have internet and be able to log into UNH to get access to the Safari books. Trouble? Service unavailable. Uh, are you actually logged in? Are you at? You're logged in? Perhaps because we all logged into Safari at the same time, it's flipping out. It may have a, a limit on the number of users at one time. I don't know. I've never seen this before. If you come back later, you'll probably be able to get into Safari. I've never seen this before, but when we do this class and we all have 19 or 20 people try to log into one service at once, then we find out that there's limits on things. You should quick read the entire book before we go on. <laughs> Excellent. When you need more information, that'll be there for you. Uh, we're not going to use it right now. But if you want to bone up on any topics, bone up for those who aren't. Native English American speakers means learn more about. Sorry for my use of vocabulary. We'll close that up. So that's Safari Tech Books Online. There's lots of other resources in the library. We'll hit a few more throughout the semester. We're a little weak on having journals, but I apologize. We'll have to survive that. Last time, there was a question about finding out which software is installed on the computer and which software you can install for Ubuntu. I've written a section up on that. We won't go through it in detail. It's there for you to read through if you want to see how to do it. It talks about the command line version. So there's commands like dpackage, dpkg, how to search through things. At the bottom, there's a screenshot showing you that you can also get to something called the Synaptic Package Manager. This is a graphical tool for viewing packages and installing them if you're feeling like you actually want a, a graphical interface or GUI. It's an easy way to search for stuff and not have to remember the command line stuff. But the command line stuff is very handy. And now we're going to jump into the meat of today. And that's a topic called Emacs, which is a text editor. And I'm going to drop you straight into working with something called org mode. I'm going to give you a little background as to what's going on and why I'm really interested in having you guys learn org mode and seeing if you want to use it in your later research. So I tended to keep notebooks and I thought about bringing them in, but there would be a stack yay high of paper notebooks for research going back to the early 90s when I was an undergraduate. And when you have paper and you have 
you know, lots and lots of pages that you built up over the years and you want to search the paper, if you don't remember what year you did something or, you know, how to otherwise find it, it can take forever to find something and you end up reading all of your old notes, which is fun, but not productive. So in 2004, when I was at NASA, one of the other engineers that I was working with suggested, why don't you create a text file for every year and just paste notes in there. Don't worry about it, just start pasting stuff. And then you can search through it. And we've run that command called grep to search for text. You can run things like grep on it and say, I'd like to see all the places that I used that word count command. You know, show me all the tricks that I did with it over the last years. You can start searching this stuff very quickly. So in 2004, you can see here I use word count on my log files. And the text files got some bits and pieces. But in 2004, I had 12,000 lines of notes. Last year, I actually had 31,000 lines of notes. That might seem scary, but a lot of that is cut and paste. So if you're working in a shell, you can just copy what you did, type history, select the text, paste it into your notes. You've just generated 100 lines of notes about what you've done for the last couple hours without being very stressed out and having to sit down and think and write and waste a lot of time on that. So you can see that I've started to do a fair bit of that. And I want to show you an example of one of my log files. It actually can output, now that I switched to org mode from straight text in 2010, I've actually got something that's indexed. It's got search mechanisms. It's got a table of contents. And I don't have to do any extra work to create those things. So being able to go in and mark things as you go as a particular topic and then say, give me everything of that topic is something that org mode is really great at. And I actually know that several of the graduate students here have used this for organizing their thesis defense, for keeping notes, for planning for things. You can build checklists in this for if you go to sea of the things you need to do before and after and during a cruise. It's a really handy system and it's usable in lots of different ways. So I'm going to show you some ways that I use it. And if you adopt this, you'll find ways that work for you that are different than what I do. So don't just think about what I'm doing. There may be a need for something for organization that you like that works well in the system. So let me show you an example of one of my log files. Please do not be intimidated by the volume. I take a lot of notes. So this is the HTML or web output that comes from the org mode file. And you can see that I, do it, I just do a really boring format where I do an entry per day, and then I have sub-entries for topics. You can see all sorts of strange things in here. I'm going to jump down to them, to some entries, and start showing you just a little bit about what's going on. And what you're seeing are my first entries that I made when I was learning org mode. So they're not necessarily always the fanciest. But you can have little blocks of text. You can put tables in. You can have web links to anything that you need. We have delicious, but you don't always necessarily want to have something in Delicious, separate from your notes, if you want to have them together here, you can just drop in links, email addresses, be able to click on them. You can include pictures. You can actually do calculations in this. Uh, you can link out to tables, have them do column math, just like you would in a spreadsheet. So you can see there's all kinds of different things in here. Things are marked to do, and they're marked, some of them are marked done. You know, so here's working with some ships, cruise uh, layout of what was going on for that time. So there's lots of really exciting things that you can do with this. And then when you start building up notes throughout your thesis, you can go back to the beginning of your thesis and see what was going on. And this is the most valuable when you've been doing it for a long time. When you're starting out, you have some information in there, but it's not really a database for your head. If you've been doing this for a year or two, you start having enough information that you then start counting on this. And for me, it's very hard to do research without these notes around. I am always going back and trying to remember exactly what I did for a particular thing or get reacquainted with a topic if it's been a year or two since I've done a particular thing. So for example, if you're working on a particular aspect of, say, calibrating a multi-beam sonar, and the last time you calibrated a sonar was three years ago, there might be things that you're going to forget. And if you've got detailed notes like this and maybe a picture of the setup, a few things like that, you jump back to your notes, find it quickly, and you can get yourself back up to speed because a lot of what we do is fairly complicated. So that's an example of it. And you can see that I do a lot. We uh, did all of these commands before last time. So hopefully you all have done this. If you haven't right now, we'll skip this and not worry about it right now. Ask me later on, and I can help you and set this up. These commands, make sure that you've got the tools available 
to make a nice HTML export for the web form and to make a PDF from your notes. So let's jump in to opening up files in Emacs and we'll start creating some files that are org mode examples and we're just going to learn by doing. There's, I don't even know how many commands there are in, in Emacs and org mode. There are just huge amounts, but we're going to start small by example and we'll see what we can create pretty quickly. So go ahead and start Emacs up at the top. It's that weird blue purple circle with a squiggly E and some strange slash through it that we added to our toolbar last time. And that weird red squiggle is a GNU. It's supposed to be a cow-like critter. Emacs everywhere. So Emacs came about before Microsoft Windows or before Mac OS and this stuff. So it has a little bit of different terminology. So you're going to hear some funny things like visiting files. Let's go ahead and open a directory and just pick research tools for starts. <coughs> open. So Emacs actually lets you see directories right inside of what you're doing. Uh, you might want to make it as wide as possible, especially with our research tools name is an awfully long username. So we'll be, we'll be using this to manage files and folders later on. You can scroll up and down. You can press enter on a file or directory. It will open it up. It's a very handy tool. It's called dir-ed mode. But let's go ahead and visit a new file. So we're going to create something new. And we're going to call it example.org. Now, I told you before that extensions at the end of file names are just hints. So if you were to pick something else, you could force it to be an org mode file. Here, if you say .org at the end, Emacs is going to switch into org mode and get us set up for working with this right away. So it's, a, it's not a forced, but it's a hint. So example.org. And now you have a blank screen, and you have no idea what to do. But we'll just start off with some of the basic commands. Now, if you look up at the top, there's menus like other text editors. Sorry, can I slide down? Of course. Are you able to open a file yet? It takes a little getting used to, yeah. So, OK, find file. Type in example.org. You can always hit cancel and start over. So visit new file. And type example.org. Press enter or OK. So example.org. If I'm going too fast, jump through too much, wave a hand. Now, I see some of you have actually opened something called example without the .org on the end. If you do that, make sure you do file, visit new file again. So you've actually opened up the wrong name. So go up to file and make sure you get example.org on there. Now, if your window is going down below the bottom, which happens a lot here, so like you're seeing the bottom, you can say remind me later on this thing and drag the virtual machine to take up more of the screen or you can hit the full screen mode. Now you can see all of the Emacs window. You want to make sure that you can see the bottom of the window. You guys are doing great. There's a couple menus up at the top, and they change. So depending on what you're doing, new items will appear up at the top. In org mode, you'll see that this one appears up at the top. And I'm going to make my window, pardon me while I change the size of the window so we can see the bottom. Question on the right. What yep. is org mode? What is org mode? We're going to learn by doing. So right now, it's just a particular mode that the text editor is in. And it gives you more features. So I'll go through and explain it more later on. Emacs is a text editor? Emacs is a text editor and a lot more. You don't have to do this, but I will show you really quickly. This is also Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to play Tetris, it also has Tetris in there. It's a super powerful text editor. It's a little bit different than most text editors that you're used to seeing. It's got all kinds of strange things like that, and it's complaining that it can't save my score. That's OK, because I really suck. <laughs> org mode is an, a subset. It's an extra thing in Emacs that lets us do outlines and organizations and have hyperlinks for web URLs that actually you can click on. So you're going to see some of that coming on. It's a little hard to get the sense of that until you've seen a bunch of different modes happen. There's a text mode that's just boring, plain old text. There's a mode for Python when you're editing text for 
that's actually Python code. There's a mode for C and Fortran, MATLAB, and it gives you different features depending on what you're doing. So org mode is the organizational mode. It's uh, basically started off as an outlining tool. So if you go under org, you can say new heading, and it's going to look a lot like when we did the wiki. So there's going to be little special characters that go in your text that give you special features. Unfortunately, most of these things, they're called markup languages of various sorts. They're all slightly different. I, you'll find that I actually make a lot of mistakes where I type in the media wiki highlighting text. For example, if, if I'm trying to make something bold, I often type in the wrong thing because I use too many different markup languages. But there's menu items for each one of them, or you can just type them straight. So this is a heading, a first heading. So we used a command to do that but you could have done it very easily with just typing it. So we can always say new heading, a second heading, and you can make subheadings by adding more stars. Doesn't look like very much and it's not very helpful in this mode, but there's a lot of stuff hiding behind the scenes here that you can do. So if, you ha if you're building yourself an outline, we say another sub heading and I if you go up to this line with the star on it and the two subheadings, magically I made them disappear and magically they came back. What I did was I pressed the tab key. And the tab key does what's called folding. So you can collapse your outline. If you have a lot of outline structure, you can make things come and go and you see the little three dots that appear after things. That means there's entries underneath that. So the idea being, if you're working on a very big document, you can collapse it just to the top level items, and then you can start working through big documents. Let's make a little bit more interesting example before we go and create our first publication. If we just type in some random text, I'm just going to hit the keys a whole bunch. Press enter. Let's go ahead and save that. Since we're going to be good and always save Emacs, there's lots of saving behind the scenes, but it never hurts to save. And let's go ahead and do an export. And we're going to export this to HTML and have it pop up in the web browser. And you're going to build your first web page of the class that's not inside of some wiki out there. We'll do org. Go down to export slash publish. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick. With Emacs, there's two funky shortcuts that, that run around that you'll see a lot of. And I guarantee you, you'll, you'll forget this for a few times until you've seen it 10,000 times in this class. You're going to see the letter C, and then here's a lowercase c. So this is a capital C, a dash, and a lowercase c. In Emacs speak, that means press and hold the control key, that thing on the left-hand side of your keyboard. The dash is then, you're not going to do anything with the dash, and the C means press the C character. It's going to be hold down control, press C once, and then let go. And that's going to, I'll show that to you. Watch down here at the bottom. There's a little window down here is sort of the status display of what's going on. So I'm holding down control, and I press C. It doesn't look like much has happened, but there's a little C dash C, and then it's waiting for the next thing. So go ahead and hit control C. So just click on the background window to get rid of the menu. Do Yep, so then you see the little C appear down there at the bottom. Perfect. Oh, if you keep doing it, you're going to get more stuff and it's going to get confused. So just press Control C once. It, it has lots of extra functionality, so it might do strange things, but just press Control C again. So just once. Another character to know real quick if you're stuck Control G is the quit in Emacs. You have gone way ahead. Um, <laughs> Did you mean to go um, Let me get you set up here. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to go back and we're going to edit example.org. Okay. So now this is where you should, oh wait, you already have it in some place else. Yeah. So go ahead. This is where you're going to do it from. So that's the, how we're going to do a lot of commands. Now, if you do after that, control E, and that was the shortcut that was in this menu up here. So I'm going to hit control G to you know that. So org, it's trying to teach you shortcuts as you go. So publish is control C, control E. 
So you can either pick this menu, or I'm going to do it from the keyboard. So Control C, Control E, and it's going to bring up a really crazy looking menu with tons of stuff, most of which you don't care about. It's going through this and giving you a menu of characters you can type to get various forms of output. So you can export as HTML, LaTeX. If you haven't seen LaTeX before, you'll see it in this class. It's a way to mark up and write papers. There's DocBook if you want to write a book. There's FreeMind, which is a really neat mind mapping tool. Task Juggler, even we can even write our own output formats. You can output to iCalendar and then import it into your calendar system. We're going to do, if I can find it here, under the HTML section, press the letter B, which is export as HTML and open in browser. So when you press that, you should see Firefox come up. So at the bottom, it said HTML export done, push to kill ring and clipboard, and it should be starting up Firefox. So if you've got your Firefox iconify down at the bottom, click on that, and you're going to see your example show up as this HTML page with a table of contents and all kinds of features that just magically appear. Yeah. So now you press B, the letter B. Uh, Windows version of Emacs Max or only for uh, Linux? There is for Windows, for Mac, for things you've never heard of, there's Emacs. the same function? Yes, okay. yes. Once you learn Emacs, you can use it pretty much everywhere except for your phone. You are deep in the middle of stuff and then you start clicking elsewhere. And you're probably seeing all sorts of other Emacs functionality. So you've all managed to do that. Let's do some some extra features in here. You've now made a web page. Let's put some stuff in here that might actually matter, <laughs> other than like uh, me hitting the keyboard randomly. And if we go grab a URL, and we're going to Google on something, let's say CCOM. So here's the CCOM web page. If you copy that, so we'll do edit, copy. We're going to paste it in here, and you can do edit paste. We now have a link and there's a special line underneath this. And if you put your mouse over it and you click on that, that's an active link. So any link to a web page you put in your notes actually takes you to that web page. So if I click on this, not very interesting because we were already there. So if we close out the CCOM web pages, nothing up my sleeve here, just notes. Mm -hmm. And we click on that. There you go. You can also, so if we just type in one because we knew yahoo.com, for example, or unh.edu. You can just start adding links in there. It gets a little messy. If we export this, it'll be kind of strange. But let's turn it into a list. And if you go up to org, I believe it's got list stuff here. I don't actually use the menus too often. Somewhere in here is probably a list item. But I know that a list starts with a dash. So let's put dashes in front of each of those lines in the list. So on the wiki, we had a slightly different character. You put a star. Here we're putting a dash. Uh, the dash before it is going to turn this into a list. And if we export it again, you'll say Control C. So you'll see that Control C at the bottom. Control E. You bring up this crazy menu with all the different options. Again, we're going to use that B for export in HTML, so press the letter B. And your Firefox should generate a new version of the examples. And if you look down here, there's a little list of items with links. If you want to link, open the link in a new tab, then you can right click and do the normal Firefox things from the web browser. This is always going to open up a new tab. So if I click on Yahoo, it takes me to Yahoo and I'm in a new tab. So if you want to have bookmarks for things and whatnot, you can put them in your notes. This is how I do links in our class notes. Let me show you a little bit about the lines down here. So Emacs has its own idea of keeping track of windows and files and things. Down here is your status bar. If you see two stars right here, it means you haven't saved the file. So there's been changes that haven't been saved to disk. So I need to do a file save right here. This is your file name. And then you've got a line number. So I'm on line 17. And then this is the mode that I'm in. So I'm in org mode for this file. And as we go through Emacs over the rest of the semester, you're going to see things changing down here. You can also do fancy things. I'm going to show you a couple without actually showing you the keys right away. 
We can split it into two windows. I can open up the directory view at the same time. I can start editing some other file. So here I've created one called foo, and there's now a status line for each of those. And I'll walk through these commands later on, but I want to get you through the basics first. So each one's got a status line, and here it doesn't have any real mode to go with that. It doesn't know what a foo file is, so it just calls it fundamental. So let's go create some more types of things in our document. So let's start off, and we'll do something really fancy. Let's create a table. Tables, if you press the vertical bar key, which was when we were on the command line, that was the pipe. And now we're creating a table. This is the first line of the table. So this is a column one, another column. And just put vertical bars between each of your columns. If we hit enter, nothing happens. But if we go back up here to this line, press the tab key, and you have a new line. And we can type some data, more data, a value, one, two, three, four. And you keep going. If you're inside the table and you press enter, it creates a new row. Or you can just do it on your own by typing in stuff. And as long as the first line of that starts with that vertical bar, you're now inside the table. You can also create horizontal separations. So I put a vertical bar and one or more dashes. If you're in there, press tab right after this. And if all goes well, it fills out the rest of the row with how it wants to do a, a blank line in here. So it's done a bunch of dashes, a plus, a bunch of dashes. When we export this, we should see what looks like a nice table with column headings. Hopefully it does the right thing and makes them bold or something. You'll then see columns in a table. So if you're building up a data, a little data report, this would be a nice way to do it. And let's go ahead. Sure, I'll do another row here. If you're right here and you do dash, and then you press tab. And there can't be any spaces with a dash. Create a new line down here, just keep going down. Yep, right there. So a vertical bar, and then a dash. Now press tab. There you go. Edit undo. OK, so go down to a new line below. Because you've, you've got characters out there, just go down to the bottom. Go, do, go down one more. OK, right there. Vertical bar. A dash. And now press tab. Can you wait? March. Just to set There's all kinds of operations in the table. I will point you at the documentation where you can read up on how to do all the fancy table stuff. You can change rows. You can move rows up and down. You can move columns left and right. All kinds of stuff. If you can do it in Excel or OpenOffice, you can probably do it here. It just might be a little funky sometimes. When you're learning Emacs, you'll get to know all ports of the keyboard. There's lots and lots of shortcuts. Right, if, you just, if you're anywhere in the table, hit Tab right now. And then it resorts your, your thing. And you can also do things like highlight text and press Delete. It should work. And you're going to see this. Don't feel that you have to understand every little bit of it right now. We're going to go through it a whole lot throughout the semester, and you'll get more and more comfortable with these commands as you go. It takes a couple weeks of using Emacs to get good at it, and a lot of years to get great at it. But it's very powerful from the beginning. So now let's go ahead and export again. So I'm just going to be lazy and use the menu, and press the B for open and email in the browser. And we're going to go to our Firefox and see if we have a table. So now we have a little table and column one and another column are bold, and we now have a nice view of some, some data. Why no you can ask for that, but it's a particular style that the authors of this really liked was no full table columns. There's a, a little special trick you can put in there, and I will show you guys in another lecture how to make it have lots of rows and columns. Because if you look at, so if we look at the class notes, you can see that I have more lines in mine. So I've actually used that trick in the lecture notes to add lines in more of the table. So you can control how that goes. But it's, it's a little bit complicated, so I'm not going to show it just yet. Can we view your web 
I am going to upload all the org mode files for all of the lecture notes so you can see all of the gory details. So you can just say, oh, someone wrote this in org mode, I'm going to open it. They have to upload the org mode file for you to be able to see it. Because in the homework, you're actually going to be working in an org mode file, and you're going to create an HTML file, and you have to give me both. So let's do a few more uh, example things. One of the things that I think is going to be very useful for things like Summer Hydro is a checklist. And if you put square brackets, this is considered a checklist. You're going to find there's a couple keys in org mode that get used a lot. Control C, Control C is a command that tends to cycle through things. So if we go up to one of our entries, one entry is going to have a dash on the beginning of the line. There's going to be a space, a left square bracket, another space, a right square bracket, and then space, and then you write text. So if you press Control C, Control C in, a, in one of these lines, a little X appeared, and that indicates that that item is done. Now there's lots of sort of helpers up in the, man, the uh, menu up here. So org, there's to-do lists, properties, all kinds of crazy stuff in here. But these are some of the basics. So let's go ahead and export this one just to see what it looks like. Org, export publish, the letter B. And if we look over here, there's now a little checklist. Down the road, you can actually ask org mode to go through your document and create an agenda of things that you haven't done yet. And that's where org mode starts getting super powerful is that as you work through, say, a cruise or a research project, you can mark everything you have to do It'll then keep track of what you have and haven't done and give you a summary of it. You can add deadlines and things like that and be able to manage everything that you're doing with a project through this interface. Is everybody able to make a checklist with an X in it? Or list and That's very strange. You need to have a new line. Thank you, Ben. Yes, I, I had to have a new line. So you guys all had new lines and I didn't. And hopefully now if I do it with a new line, Yes, looks better. OK. And it's doing things at the bottom. If you see this, it actually has an author marked in there and a date. Uh, it's picking that up out of your account. And since you're using the research tools account, it's not very helpful. And click in this window once. Now press Control G. So now you're back to where you should be. Hit Enter a couple times. Now do an export. So Control C, Control E, and then press the B character. So now you've generated an example, okay. and let's take a look. That looks better. Control C, Control C is when you're in the list that turns on and off that check mark. So if you look at your check mark, you've used a lowercase x, it's going to want to use a capital X. Just click on like this line right here, and press Control C, Control C, and then again, Control C, Control C. Same line, just press Control C, Control C, and it disappears. So it turns on and off whether or not that's done. It's probably not looking like very much at this point. You know, it's a lot of little bits and pieces that aren't creating a, much of a hole yet. But if we get through there, in the homework you're going to see that it actually gives you a nice structure to be working from. I'm going to show you a couple other things that we can do. If you want to insert a date, press Control C and then a period. Now the period is hard on the whiteboard, so here's Control C and then a period. And it's going to bring up a calendar. So now you're facing a calendar, and if you use the mouse, you can pick a date in here. So control C and then a period. Remember control G is the quick character. So we can pick a date and you can just click on any date in there. Oh full stop, yes. If you're not if you're British English that's full stop. Yes, we just ran into this last week with a South African. All right, now you're all very happy. You can click on a date and you'll now be inserting uh, a date. And this date is special because org mode actually knows about the date. All right, so a lot of you are ending up with split windows where Emacs is trying to tell you something in a separate window. What you can do, there's a couple different things. Down here, this is the, 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 wind, the command that will actually split your window. We want to do the opposite. So if you've got a split window like this, we definitely need to know how to get out of that. Control X and the number one will unsplit your window. So if you go ahead and if you don't have a split window, say split window down here, 
And right below it is the remove splits. And that will then get rid of the two separate things. We can also do, it get pretty crazy, we can split the other direction. And that's control X three is split sideways. And control X two is the split up down. And you can split and split and split. So if we do two, split this way, split that way, split this way, <laughs> split that way, it can get pretty crazy, but then you hit control X one and you go back to that. Again, with terminology, files in Emacs, think of them as buffers. So file equals buffer in their world. So you're probably used to file, things being called file, you can go through and select different stuff. So if you have lots of things open, you can switch to different stuff. Like we have that calendar that we used, that's still around. So if you go to buffers, select calendar, here's that calendar from before. So for example, if you're lost here and you want to get back to your org mode, example, go to buffers, there's example.org, you click on that and you're back to your example. That was a little aside because I saw a whole bunch of you stuck in multiple windows. It's not fun when you don't know what it is, but move your mouse up, no, not the mouse, move the pointer, the cursor, with the arrow keys inside of your date. Move on to the year. If you hold down the shift key and press the up arrow button or the down arrow button, you can change by year. If you move over to the day button, you can go up by day, down by day, and you'll see the day of the week change with it. So it's pretty handy if you want to insert dates, move things around. Now here's where I think it gets really, really cool, is we can add source code. So you're going to do control X one, the unsplit, and that's control X and then a one. There's no control on the one. You, you held down control when you pressed one. So just do control X, press X. <laughs> so what you do is you press control X, then you let go. Then you press just the number one by itself. Now go up to buffers. This is tough. And I know you guys are very different than most text editors, so hang in there. And now scroll, go to buffers and select example.org. And now you're back to where you were. Can I kill a buffer? You can most certainly kill a buffer. You can do whatever you want to a buffer. Um, <laughs> hopefully there's nothing useful in that buffer. <laughs> you can certainly kill a buffer if you'd like to kill a buffer. It's going to get a lot easier down the road. Let's go and create a source code example. Begin source sh. This is how we create, and you're going to see these in your homework, and src. And what we've got here is a block of source code that's going to get highlighted in a little block, and it's going to be colored so that it kind of helps you out and see what's in there. So if we type inside this echo hello world and do a file save. So I did a save and now do another org export publish. Press that B again and let's see what we get. And so you should see, just like I've got on the screen up here, a blue bordered box with a gray background and your hello world command in there. So as you're taking notes, you can write a paragraph about what you're doing, put some example code in a block, and then when you export it, it's going to be nicely separated for you. Now, if you go and take a look at the homework, and I will paste this into, take a look at that link. That's your homework assignment due end of the day Thursday. And if you scroll down, you're going to see these blocks of code. And if they're too long to fit on the screen, it's going to put a scroll bar in there for you. So in your homework, you're actually going to be going along and using the check boxes, and you're going to get points off if you haven't checked a box is done. So use it to help you out go through the homework. As you go through, you're going to download the org mode file and you'll be able to do a control C, control C here and mark that off as done as you go through these things. You'll be able to do that in the box here. It's showing you how to run one of the commands that you need to run. And down below as you get into it, I'll have put in text that says fix put command here. That's where you're going to, in the org mode file, type in your answer to the homework. When you see source code, you'll see those. There's also ones where the results where it's not source code. It's something that came out of a program. And I'm going to switch back to Emacs. And there's another block that you can do that isn't highlighted. Begin example. 
end example, yada, yada. Now if you export that, and let's also, before I forget, put up here a comment. So in the shell, the pound character starts a comment. This is a comment. And when we export that, you'll see different coloring. Unfortunately, the coloring isn't always exactly the same for every version of org mode. So I do some and they come out slightly different color for some reason. But let's export this. And if we go back to our examples, take a look at it in Firefox. Down below, you can actually see the color of this is a red, orangey color for the comment. And this section, blob, yada yada, it doesn't look any different, but it won't do any highlighting in that section. So if we go back and add a comment in there, and we say, what happens with a comment? Save that. So there'll be file, save, control C, control E, and then B to publish. Go look over your examples, scroll to the bottom, and you can see that in this example, echo is in this, it's uh, blue, although that's really hard to see up on this projector. And down here, this comment is sort of this reddish, hard to see color. And this one is actually the same color on all lines, so it's not doing any highlighting. And when we do Python, you'll be able to put Python code in there, tell it that the language is Python rather than this. So instead of sh, you could put the word Python in there and it will then color it as if it's Python code. So we'll actually understand the language Python and figure it out for you. So those are the major ones. If we go to that homework assignment, up at the top, one of the things you're gonna do first is you're gonna actually run this wget command and all these commands. So I'm gonna jump into it a little bit quick here to show you. So if we open up a terminal and we start running these commands that are in there. So I've opened up my terminal to log in and you'll have to come back and mark these done once you've got the file down. I'm gonna do a make dir dash p, a surprise option to make dir for you. And you can read the man page exactly what dash p does, but it creates multiple levels of directories all at once. So it's gonna create the homework directory and the to directory, <laughs> surprise. And I'm gonna go into homework two with this cd command, and then I'm gonna paste in that wget command. There's also a do it one step at a time, and then there's a tricky way to do it. I have too many dashes in the homework. Only two dashes. Okay, so I did the first wget command. Down comes this file and it gets renamed funny because we're using tiny URL. We'll do a move of homework two and we'll rename it to have a dot org at the end. So homework dash two mode dot org. Homework two, if we take a look at it, we're gonna see an org mode file come up. And I'm gonna bring it up in Emacs and start showing you how to work with it. So we're gonna go visit a file. This is gonna be our homework file. So file, open file. And you should now have a homework directory and a two. And inside there will be this org mode file that is your homework. So from now on, if I can pull it off, your homeworks are all gonna be org mode files and a lot of it will be filling in and working with that document and then giving back the end result with the improved org mode file full of answers. And you're gonna see a lot of formatting as you go. You don't have to worry about all of it. Some of it's sort of learned by example as you see it, but up at the top, we have some fancy stuff, which is here that you can set the author name and the email. If I see any of your homeworks with fix colon in the end result, except for in the paragraph that talks about fix colon, then you're gonna lose some points. The, I use that as a text string to mark where you need to be putting in answers. But as we go down here, so here's the to-do list. And as I go through that, I'm gonna hit control C, control C on the virtual machine section. Open up a terminal, I'll do that, control C. I made the directories, okay, we did that. I did that one. I ran the wget command, I renamed it, and I've opened it up in Emacs. Boom, here I am. So I've now checked those off. 
When you finish a section, org mode has a special thing where it can flag things as to do or done. And if we go up to the org section up here, any header entry can be marked as to do or done. Go to to do lists, done. So if you can go up to that menu option, to do lists, done, to do, dash. The next one, hopefully, if I remember my org mode right, should be nothing. Boom. Now it's not marked as to do or done. It, it doesn't have a status in it. And you can get really crazy and make your own modes if you want. So again, we can go in. We'll set that as done. So org to do list done. So control C, control T is the, the command for that. Or you can use the menu. We'll mark that as done and you move on to the next section. When you're finished with the homework, there should be no to do's. It should be all done. All of the check boxes should have a check in them. All of the fixes should be gone. So as you work through it, uh, you'll start doing things like every time you see one of these boxes, it means you need to do something. So here I've done one for you. Starting off with org mode, I've gone off and I've, the question is, what is the CCOM website? So I pasted in the URL for the CCOM website and then I've marked it with an X and that's control C, control C. So you'll work through those, answer some questions, build this up as you go. It's going to walk you back through some of the examples that we did with the command line. You're going to be downloading some data, which is actually a ship track off of Boston. And hopefully next time we'll actually view where the ship went. You'll download this, this comma separated value file and you'll uncompress it. And you'll start working with it. You'll, you know, it'll walk you through uncompressing the file. And here it says fix, put command here. You'll place the command in, in that where that text is. And you'll then go down and you'll run the, like, the file command to figure out what type of file it is. You'll use the head and tail commands. I've just given you a big hint there. You've used head before, but I'm not sure I've mentioned tail. And you'll work through all of that. And at the bottom, it'll walk you through creating a tar file of your homework. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that org mode file and put it into a directory. And you're going to also put the HTML export in that directory. You're going to build up a single tar file. You're going to calculate the checksum of it. And you're going to email me the checksum and put that file up on the, the research tools computer. So you're not going to email me your homework. You're going to email me just the checksum of your homework. I know, Ben, you're laughing. It's good. And the idea of this is that I can verify that homework is the homework that you think you've got. And it's not very exciting in this case, but imagine tens of thousands of homeworks or tens of thousands of surveys. And if you have a file full of the checksums, you can validate that you have all of them very easily. So I'm doing some things that are kind of goofy and weird, but in the long run, you're going to start seeing the patterns and hopefully you'll start picking up some of the tricks. So when someone says, here's the MD5 checksum of some file, you'll actually know what to do, how to check it, and uh, start building up that library of tools that will let you work with huge amounts of data very efficiently. So give the homework a go. Uh, we'll do even more of this on Thursday, and hopefully we'll start making some plots. And I promise we will make a movie of the Healy. I swear. We'll get to it. It's a lot for today. Start getting used to Emacs. Give it a go. Ask lots of questions on Thursday.